Welcome to Professionalism and Customer Service in the Healthcare Environment, Overview of Communication Relevant to Health IT. In this unit, we'll be giving you an overview of communication topics relevant for those working in health information technology. The objectives for overview of communication relevant to health IT are to explain the purpose and goal of professional communication, describe what is meant by effective communication, discuss characteristics of ineffective communication, and identify communication needs of common roles in healthcare. The purpose of professional communication training is to ensure that individuals and teams succeed in their roles and their assigned tasks. In healthcare, that means that professional communication supports good patient care and positive outcomes by allowing nurses, physicians, administrators, and allied health professionals to work together and communicate effectively. The goal of professional communication training is to provide individuals with an understanding of the concepts and skills required to communicate in a professional manner. Professional communication skills are an important part of your training and will be critical to your success as a health IT professional. Effective professional communication accomplishes several goals. First, it ensures that your message is delivered to the recipient and that it is understood. Moreover, effective communication should result in both verbal and nonverbal feedback. As an example, if you're explaining to a person how to use a certain software program, verbal feedback might include their saying that they understand how to use it. Nonverbal feedback might be when they nod their head as you're explaining to show that they understand what you're saying. In addition, professional communication always involves a pleasant tone and appropriate language. Your credibility as a professional is built in part on your ability to communicate effectively. Conversely, ineffective communication can have a serious and long-lasting negative impact. Ineffective communication does not result in an understanding of your message by the recipient. You may give an explanation, but the person you're talking to doesn't understand what you're saying. If they stay silent and don't communicate their confusion, the communication isn't two-way and you don't get any feedback. Overly emotional, insensitive, or intimidating communication is also ineffective and can be damaging to your professional credibility. It can also negatively impact the reputation of your organization in the community. For example, if your supervisor comes in to talk with you and uses an angry tone, you're likely to be alarmed and may not hear or understand what is being said. On the other hand, if your supervisor uses an even tone and calm manner, you'll be more able to hear what she's saying and more open to her feedback. The healthcare environment includes many professional roles and teams that need to work together to help patients and their families. As an IT professional, you're an essential part of the healthcare team and will often have to communicate directly with nurses, physicians, and other health professionals. Having an understanding of other professional roles and their communication needs will help you gain the skills you need to be an effective communicator and become a valuable part of the healthcare team. Among the roles in healthcare are administrators and support staff. While these professionals aren't involved in hands-on patient care, their work ensures that the healthcare organization is run efficiently and that nurses and physicians have the resources they need to care for patients. Administrators and support staff are also responsible for ensuring that the organization complies with local, state, federal, and other regulations that govern health care. The communication needs of administrators and executives are very different from those of individuals in other health care roles. The executive needs concise, succinct, non-technical communication with only the relevant level of detail to make an informed decision. As a member of the HIT team, you may be communicating to executives as part of a monthly project review meeting or project status report. It's important for you to understand the executive's role as related to the project and to communicate effectively in a professional manner. Physicians are primarily responsible for leading the healthcare team and guiding patient care. With their specialized knowledge of medicine, physicians diagnose patients' illnesses, determine treatments, and engage other team members to resolve illness and injury in their patients. They also work with the patients on ways to prevent illness and disease. Physicians work with other healthcare professionals to care for patients. When physicians are involved in projects in their organizations, they're accustomed to being consulted about and included in all aspects of the project. 
they expect this same type of respect on health IT projects. Physician communication needs may include the technical details of a proposal so they can understand how the system works and increase their overall knowledge. It's also not unusual for physicians to feel responsible for representing diverse clinical perspectives. So they may adopt a challenging or seemingly adversarial stance to ensure that all viewpoints have been thoroughly considered. In the hospital setting, nurses provide hands-on patient care at the bedside. In addition, nurses are often the last safety check for orders like medications. Nurses are also responsible for assessing and managing the patient's condition during the course of their shifts and reporting to physicians on patient status. Nurses also work in clinic and outpatient settings where they're important members of the healthcare team. Nurses rely on information being delivered in a concise and direct manner. They typically don't have the desire or the time to read an entire dissertation on the reasoning for one IT technical approach versus another. They want to understand the impact on their workflow and the care of their patients. They also need sufficient advance notice of changes and any training that would be needed. Allied health professionals provide a wide range of technical, diagnostic, therapeutic, and patient care services. Examples include occupational therapists, respiratory therapists, dietitians, physical therapists, and others. Most allied health professionals interact directly with patients, while others work behind the scenes. Allied health professionals are valuable members of the health care team and provide support to the health care providers and to the patient in the form of medication order verification, taking x-rays, providing physical therapy for rehabilitation, and the management and use of information technology. Each of these allied health professionals has different communication needs. For example, a pharmacist relies on real-time allergy information to deliver safe patient medications. When a patient's allergy information is no longer available due to a problem with the system interface, this becomes an urgent patient safety issue that must be communicated quickly to the impacted users, particularly the pharmacist. However, the physical therapists could be satisfied with non-real-time information, such as the appointment schedule being emailed to the manager just before the beginning of the workday. Patients depend on effective communications among the members of their health care team. Understanding their concerns and challenges is an important building block in your communication skills when you interact with them. Remember that they're often worried and possibly impaired in their ability to understand you. There are numerous regulatory agencies at both the state and federal level that license and approve organizations for patient care, as well as other external entities that require information. These include state licensing boards and the Joint Commission, both of which oversee hospital operations. They typically require regular reporting from healthcare organizations. In addition, those who pay for services, such as CMS and insurance companies, also have information needs. Communication from you and your organization, such as reporting on patient care statistics, quality measures, or billing information, must be professional, timely, accurate, and thorough. These communications are typically in the form of highly structured reports. The need for effective professional communication doesn't end when you walk out the door at the end of the workday. The general public will judge what you say about your organization outside the workplace. Complaining about your workplace to neighbors and friends could negatively impact their confidence in the care they may be receiving there, perhaps for a serious condition. Remember that your own particular experience may not reflect the organization as a whole. Be aware of organizational policies that govern communication on social media sites and news agencies. Most organizations state that employment can be terminated when communication is posted that reflects poorly on the organization or patient care. You want to present a professional demeanor while interacting with others face-to-face. -face. This includes elements such as how far you stand from someone, your body language, your vocal tone, and choice of words. Making sure you don't invade someone's personal space is important to professional communication. Having positive body language, good posture, direct eye contact, and full concentration is important as well. Use a pleasant tone, avoid slang, and don't use offensive language. Inappropriate humor can detract from professional demeanor, and so can inappropriate sharing of personal information. 
Remember that the healthcare environment is a very diverse place with people of varied ages, nationalities, religions, and cultural backgrounds. What may be a funny joke in one culture can be offensive in another. Also, what you may perceive as appropriate personal sharing, such as family history or personal problems, may seem inappropriate to someone else. Be sensitive to how your communication might be perceived by others. Your demeanor when using email should also be professional. Use clear and concise language. Stay focused on the purpose of the communication. Avoid making jokes or sharing personal information. Always begin with appropriate greetings, such as Dr. Cole or Ms. Hillman. End each message with your name, title, and contact information to make it easier for people to reach you by phone if they need to. Your demeanor over the phone blends the important facets of face-to-face -face and email communications. Always maintain a professional tone and keep your language clear and concise. Avoid humor, jokes, and sharing of personal information. When leaving a voicemail message, be brief and leave your contact information to enable the person to reach you easily. Speak slowly and clearly and repeat your phone number. This concludes the overview of communication relevant to health IT. In summary, communication skills are one of the building blocks of a successful professional career. Professional communication supports effective teamwork. It also helps various professionals in a workplace to carry out their responsibilities successfully. In healthcare, that means that professional communication supports good patient care and positive outcomes by allowing nurses, physicians, administrators, and allied health professionals to work together. Having a clear understanding of the other professional roles in your organization and their communication needs will be important to your communication skills. Without these skills, your coworkers may not see you as a professional.